It is also a ceremony that both teaches and appreciates our Air Force military heritage. Drill is an integral part of military history, a prominence that rests on the fact that its fundamental purpose was to prepare troops for battle. For the most part, drill procedures practiced in the past were identical to the tactical maneuvers employed on the battlefield. It was this aspect of drill which made it such an important part of training. Even today, drill remains a necessary and useful training activity for instilling discipline and esprit de corps. Over 220 years ago, General Washington enlisted the assistance of Baron von Steuben, a distinguished Prussian officer, to help instill discipline. Baron von Steuben arrived at Valley Forge in February of 1778, facing an army of several thousand undisciplined, half-starved, wretched men in rags. To correct these conditions, he set to work immediately and wrote regulations designed to teach the discipline of drill to a model company of 120 selected men. Discipline became a part of the military for these individuals as they learned to respond to commands without hesitation. As they mastered the art of drill and began to work as a team, this group developed a collective sense of pride in themselves and in their units. Watching this model company perform, observers were amazed to see how quickly and efficiently the troops could be massed and maneuvered into different battle formations. Later, members of this model company were assigned throughout the regular army to teach drill. It was through this simple emphasis on drill that the effectiveness and efficiency of Washington's Continental Army were improved. In 1789, Baron von Steuben wrote the Army's first field manual. The regulations were ordered and discipline of the troops of the United States. The drill procedures placed into effect at Valley Forge were not changed for over 85 years, and many of these same procedures are still in use today. One form of drill is the salute. Since early times, men of arms have used some form of salute as an exchange of freedom, the most popular of which has been the hand salute. This exchange has been preserved and its use continued in all modern militaries, which inherit their traditions from the age of chivalry. Throughout today's ceremony, you will see the airmen presenting arms as one form of the military salute. The civilian counterpart from the salute is manifested in various ways, such as placing the right hand over the heart when the national anthem is played, or raising the hand when greeting a friend. The military salute is given in the same manner as a gesture of recognition and a friendly greeting to a comrade in their honorable profession of arms. To maintain the proper decorum and respect for events such as this, we ask that you abide by the following standards while you are here. First, there will be times that you will be asked to sing for the invocation, the playing of the national anthem, the playing of the Air Force song, the reciting of the oath of enlistment, and the Airmen's Creek. Second, we ask that you remain silent during these times, reflecting on the price that has been paid for our freedom. Third, we ask that you pay respect to the flag during the national anthem as it passes during the review. Military members in uniform will stand at attention and render a salute. Civilians should stand at attention, stand and place their right hand over their heart. Veterans and military members not in uniform may render a salute or place their right hand over their heart. After the last note of the national anthem and after the flags have passed, you may then return your hand to your side. We also ask that all cell phones and other electronic devices be silenced at this time. As the flights pass in review, applause is appropriate. But please limit that applause so that others may hear the narration of the names and hometowns of the military training instructors. Please reserve the strictest respect during our open enlistment. During this oath, airmen pledge their lives to support and defend the Constitution and our country. For the safety and comfort of those around you, we ask that you remain in place until our distinguished guests have left the reviewing stand and a part of the area. Restroom facilities are located in the buildings on either side of the parking lot. And during this morning ceremony, smoking and the consumption of alcoholic beverages is not permitted. Finally, please do not go onto the grassy areas when taking photos during the ceremony. And now I'd like to take a moment to inform you on the specific flight locations on the parade field. As viewed from the bleachers from your left to your right, the first two flights to pass for review today are from the 320th Training Squad, Warrior Flight 133 and Honor Flight 134. The next two flights are from the 321st Training Squad, 
flights 135 and 136. They are followed by flight 137 from the 331st Stranger Squad. In the center of the freight field are the 737 training groups, Drum and Eagle Corps, flights B145 and B146 from the 322nd Training Squad. The flights selected to carry our national, state, and territorial flags are from the 323rd Training Squad, flights 139 and 140, followed by flight 138 from the 331st Training Squad. The next two flights to pass are review are from the 326 train squadron, flights 141 and 142. The last two flights to pass are review today are from the 321st train squadron, flights 143 and 144. At this time, please find a place to sit, thank you, and enjoy today's service. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the entrance of our official park. Please remain standing for the invocation given by Chaplain Johnson. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank thee for this joyous occasion. Brings us together as fellow airmen, leaders, families, and friends. This beautiful day where our collective hearts, full of love and appreciation, we come this morning to celebrate the accomplishments and achievements of the airmen standing before us today. We thank thee for these airmen who have worked hard and given up much to get to this day. God, we thank thee for the selfless dedication and hard work put forth their military training instructors and staff to teach these men and women to be the best airmen they can be. God, allow us and especially that one moment to revel in the fruits of their labor this morning. Give our MTIs and their families a sense of pause. Appreciate the journey. God, may you continue to bless them and the families of these airmen. Now, oh God, grant unto these airmen zeal to chase after truth, justice, and freedom. And may they always bring honor to the Air Force and to themselves. Allow them to leave this place with a purpose greater than themselves the courage to always carpe diem, each moment afforded to them. It is in your holy, mighty, and most precious name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Chaplain Johnson. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. The host of today's parade, Colonel Mark Cameron, Commander 37 Training Wing, Joint Base San Antonio, Lackland, Texas, welcomes our distinguished guests to today's graduation ceremony. Beginning with today's reviewing official, the Commander, 737 Training Group, Colonel Deborah Littick. The Superintendent, 737 Training Group, Chief Master Sergeant Richard Sutherland. We hope you enjoy today's ceremony. The airmen who will pass a review today have completed a demanding eight-week program that provides Air Force units throughout the world with trained airmen. Part of this training includes the time-proven concepts of military customs and traditions, of which this parade is a vital part. All graduating airmen will also march over the enlisted heroes walk. They will lead, they lead the way for thousands of airmen that will follow, all reflecting on our enlisted heritage, tradition of honor, and our legacy of valor. Our commander of airmen is Staff Sergeant Preston Goodwin, Military Training Instructor, 326 Training Squad. Colonel Littick will review today's ceremony.
Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the playing of our national anthem.
737 Training Group, United States Air Force. Joint Base San Antonio, Lackland, Texas. Subject, first place annual academic streamer for 2013. The first place academic streamer is awarded to the 323rd Training Squadron for achieving the highest end of force test average during the period of 1 January through 31 December 2013. Signed, Deborah Lydic, Colonel, United States Air Force. demonstrating teamwork, excellence, and esprit de four during the period of 23 December 2013 to 14 February 2014. Signed, Never Living, Colonel, United States Air Force.
ladies and gentlemen, the graduating airmen passing with you today represent a portion of the 35,000 recruits who will complete base military training this year. The 737 training group provides all recruits the essential military training to become motivated members of the enlisted corps of the greatest air force in the world. The military training instructors are responsible for the indoctrination, development, and discipline of the Army. They have dedicated endless hours to ensure all training objectives are met. Today's graduates have proven through academic studies, military training, physical training, and the development of teamwork that they are ready to take their place in the United States Air Force. All warrior airmen of character have participated in a rigorous competition for the coveted award of honor flight, a significant accomplishment which only one flight per graduating class is able to achieve. The honor flight can be only be awarded to a flight that achieved excellence in all facets of basic military training. Today, flight 134 from the 320th training squad is recognized as the honor flight for this graduating class. As our graduates turn left onto the bottom line, passion with you, they will march over the enlisted heroes walk. The airmen recognized on the campus have been awarded our nation's highest honors, representing heroic and unselfish actions as members of the United States Air Force in armed conflict, including present day operations in Afghanistan. They include seven medals of honor, 23 Air Force crosses, and 162 silver stars awarded for bravery during encounters with hostile enemy combatants. These enlisted heroes serve to inspire all airmen to execute their duties courageously and with honor in their service to this great nation. We would like for you to notice our national, state, and territorial flags. As these flags pass our view, please stand and render the appropriate courtesies for our national flag. Once the flags have passed our view, please be courteous of others and be seated in order to allow all our guests the opportunity to view the flights as they pass the review. Now, passing in the review, our commander of airmen is Staff Sergeant Preston Goodwin, military training instructor, 326 training squadron, hometown, Spring, Texas. Hey. Hey. Today's squadron commander is Staff Sergeant Nicholas Leslie, military training instructor, 331st training squadron, hometown, hey. Columbus, Ohio. Hey. Warrior Flight 133 from the 323rd hey. squadron, led by Staff hey. Sergeant Tony Cassieja, hometown, hey. Hopkin Center, Texas. Flight 134 from the 320 train squadron, led by Second Sergeant Mark Crow, hometown Cedar Rapids, Iowa. Flight 135 from the 321st train squadron, led by Master Sergeant Richard McCain. Hometown, New Orleans, Louisiana. Hey. Hey. Flight 136 from the 321st Training Squad, led by Second Sergeant Angelique Cardoza. Hometown, Harry, Utah. Flight 137 from the 331st Training Squadron, led by Second Sergeant Son Graham Faulkner, hometown Prattville, Alabama. The flights selected to carry our national, state, and territorial flags are from the 323rd Training Squadron, Flight 139 and Flight 140, 
Led by Technical Sergeant Joshua Power, hometown here in Mississippi, and Technical Sergeant Davina Walker, hometown Birmingham, Alabama. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. 